What's up guys, welcome to the finale of Let's Play Ratchet and Clank HD. So now we're going to transform into Giant Clank. I don't know where this uh, this machine came from that's on Velvet and all of a sudden to transform into Giant Clank, but we're not going to question it, we're going to bash through Drek's army instead. He's got everything out here, he's bought all the stops for this one, and we're just going to blow it all away with our bomb attack here. Like I said, you can do that using the triangle button, and it has a significant cooldown. So, if I didn't say so before, uh, Giant Clank is OP because his attacks are very powerful. Even these dropships, you, as you guys remember, took several, several hits with the Devastator, are destroyed in one hit. So, this sh way more powerful enough to take on Drek in this thing. Let's try it out. Nothing's going to stand in our way now. We have to break through these barricades to, uh, what do you have to do with the bomb, unfortunately. It's pretty sad, the little toad enemies from the beginning of the game are still running around down there. They just die as soon as they run into our feet. It's like, this is, we don't have to do anything, we just walk right through them. Alright, Drek, we're gonna squash you. Hey! What the- <laughs> Imbeciles! After all the trouble you've gone through, you're about to die right where you started. <laughs> it's, it's so poetic. This is it, Clank. Let's get him! All right, time for the final battle against Drek and his mech robot. And we did a significant amount of damage there with the bomb. I'm actually going to get a quick cycle on him there. Yeah, that was over fast. Been useful to me after all. Too bad you chose the wrong side. Oh, not fair at all. Yeah, so the first phase there, we take out one little portion of his health using Giant Clank, and then he automatically transforms us back down to size using his own little Morpho Ray type weapon there. So we're going to spend our remaining bolts to stock up on ammo for our power weapons, and then we're going to go take him on here. So, unfortunately, he's traversed over this chasm here, which he's conveniently laid these platforms for us we can travel across using the swing shot. But whenever we come across the next platform, it's sort of... I don't know, It's the terrain is uneven, it's very difficult to move around in, and uh, you don't really get a good... The camera's pulled way out for this fight, too, so you don't really get a good sense of scale for just how big he is, or how close or far away you are to him, so using the Tesla Claw is going to be kind of tricky, because I need to close the distance on him, and he keeps hovering behind us. But the Tesla Claw is still going to do a lot of damage. Obviously, the Devastator is still going to be really good, because the Devastator will home in on him. The problem is, I'm going to try to use the Agents of Doom here, but that ended up being a bad idea, because... He has this bomb attack, which just destroys them, usually. Or they just can't get to him. Actually, they're not... They're actually staying alive pretty well, huh? But they can't get to him, it seems like. I wanted to use all my weapons for this, though. Every single weapon I've gotten throughout the game, if I can. The problem is, if there's anything else on the ground that the Devastator can target, it will sometimes divert to that instead of him. So, uh, his attacks consist of those missiles, the bomb attack that has a big AoE we have to jump over, as well as... I'm going to try to use the... Um, Visibomb here and deal some damage. I'm probably going to end up taking a few hits from doing this, but if I can deal some good damage with the Visibomb, it's going to be worth it because the Visibomb is the most powerful weapon we have right now. He also has a giant plasma cannon on his other arm, sort of like the uh, Jaegers from Pacific Rim, sort of. And um, in later rounds, he will deploy mines and uh, dark gadget bots as well. But right now, we just have to worry about the missiles. Obviously, they have a fixed location on the ground in which they hit and the bombs, he just fires them really fast, so you have to keep jumping. But the AoE is not too much to worry about, you don't have to jump significantly high to get over it. So, those are his basic attacks. Nothing really too much to worry about in the first phase, we're just going to keep using the Devastator until uh, he has moved on to the next phase. Every time we deplete a certain uh, portion of his health, he'll stop cycling attacks, and he will take out his Plasma Cannon and just destroy this entire platform. Which, fortunately, we're not on the portion that fell off there into the chasm, but if we leave this portion of the platform that broke off, it will fall. So we can't backtrack. And those are actually some pretty long jumps there, even though they don't look like they are. So, as well as these platforms here, as soon as we land on them, they start falling. And they're pretty long platforms, too, so we gotta... Whoop, that was close. That was some crackerjack timing there. I'm really glad I put the swing shot back in my quick select there for that. I've died quite a few times in this fight just by failing to meet these jumps. It's a pretty challenging fight, especially for everything else we've been through in this game being relatively easy, even the bosses. This is a very, very difficult final boss compared to what we've had um, actually in the rest of the series and uh, in this game. Now you could obviously just exploit it by going to get the Rhino, because the Rhino would absolutely annihilate him, but you'd still have to worry about some stuff in his final phase, and you'd have to worry about the uh, platforming aspects too. 
All right, so in his second phase here, he's going to start deploying the mines. We actually got a good uh, quick cycle on him there with the uh, plasma, or I'm sorry, the Tesla, cl Tesla claw there. So um, that was pretty good. Obviously, there's some health over here I want to try to get, and I want to make sure that you you want to make sure you follow him where he's going because that's where the platforms are going to yeah see it falls in the chasm there. That's where the platforms are going to be. They're going to lead to the next phase. Um, so if you accidentally walk off the platform that goes in the right direction, you won't be able to actually get to the swing shot targets, which is unfortunate. All right, now the the final and real phase of this fight begins on the uh, deplanetizer itself, the giant laser platform. So it has come to this. Once I step on this ignition switch, a countdown will commence. The end of which signals the destruction of your pitiful world. There must be another way to make a home for your people. You think that's what this is about? Who do you think polluted our last world? I did. This is about one thing and one thing only. Cash and lots of it. You see, I've been paid for every square inch of my new world. Once the inhabitants move in, I will begin polluting this world as well. Then the whole thing starts all over again. Ah, brilliant. Why, you... Actually, you is kind of brilliant. Little... Save it, Clank. We have to stop that timer. All right, so this for this final phase, we have to use the... Power slam on the thruster pack to disable the countdown, which will destroy the planet. So even though we're hovering like right above the planet's surface, I don't know how this is going to work, but uh, we can also use the. As soon as we do this, he has a new attack where he projects his aura around the bottom, and he will just come at us and try to hit us with. And we can deal a lot of damage to him with the Tesla Claw when he does that using the uh, strafing ability of the thruster pack there. Um, eventually he'll go and reset the timer, especially if he, after he's cycled his attacks and taken a certain amount of damage. He'll reset it. Um, now he's going to start deploying the Dark Gadget Bots as well. One thing we can do here though is the uh, that blue, that lightish blue uh, parameter around the ring here, around the uh, platform, is a grind boot rail. So we can actually grind along the edge of the arena here. It's mainly just good for if you quickly need to get the hell away from him when he's charging at you. Other than that, I don't really use it because it doesn't really offer that much of a strategic advantage. Uh, he's going to continue to use the bombs and all his other attacks here. Uh, you actually have quite a bit more time than you appear to when it comes to deactivating the attack, the uh, laser switch thing. So you can actually take your time with it quite a bit and deal some additional damage to him. That's what I do here. Um, not to mention, he has one more attack in this phase. He has uh, these sort of green uh, seeker missiles that come out and they, um, they explode after they've stuck in the ground for a little while, and he will just sort of use those all throughout his cycle in addition to his other attacks. He's on his last health bar here, so he should start using it now. There they are. Yeah, they just kind of stick into the ground and explode. Um, they are a very cool flashy effect, not exceptionally dangerous, but it really helps to give you that climactic feel of we're about to defeat the final boss here. So again, the I'm almost out of ammo for the Tesla Claw. That's the problem with this fight, is you run out of ammo for all your most powerful weapons, and you're forced to improvise. So I may have to use the bomb glove, the mind glove, or the blaster here. Yeah, I, he has only like one hit left and I ran out of ammo. Oh, great. Well, that's convenient. We may have to get something else out then. Oh, he has one more attack in his final phase. He will just straight up use his plasma cannon on you and it deals a crap ton of damage. We definitely want to avoid that because it was powerful enough to destroy those platforms, so who knows what it's going to do to us. Thankfully, he's far enough away to where we have enough time to actually dodge it. If we were closer to him, it would be a lot harder to dodge it. Now, when he deploys the mines and the dark gadgetbots, his bomb attack there will destroy them, so they don't really stick around for very long. I think he's hesitant to use the to re-engage the switch because I'll just deactivate it again. I don't know if his bomb attack will destroy those green seeker missiles though, because they just sort of fly around at random and then land even more randomly near us. I don't think I've gotten hit by one yet though, or I, that I will even get hit by one in this fight. Yeah, it does destroy those as well. Oh, we almost got this. There's no ammo around here anywhere. Oh, I've got to improvise here. I need a different weapon. I can't use the Visibomb because there's not enough of, an, of a gap between his attacks. We're going to have to use the Blaster here. So we're going to use the Blaster and take out some of these dark gadgetbots here and try to close the gap between him and us and deliver that final blow. 
Come on, we've traveled all across the galaxy to defeat this loser. He is not taking our home planet from us. Not now. Not today. We did pretty good not taking damage, though, up until that very end there. Come on. Gotcha! And now the ammo appears. Ratchet? What's up? You know, this time I am thinking what you're thinking. Alright, so Drex Giant Mech Robot there managed to invert the um, laser beam facing towards the planet. You know what that means. Bye. This can't be good. And we didn't think that through, did we? Phew, that was close. Uh, Clank, you can <laughs> pull us up now. The servos in my arm appear to be broken. Broken? As in fall to our deaths broken? Uh, yes. <laughs> that was close. Thanks. My arm appears to be badly damaged. Ah, you'll be all right. Hey, Tin Can! Where do you think you're going? We, uh, still need to fix that arm. Well, isn't that cute and heartwarming? Yeah, I do have to admit, that scene did kind of... did kind of uh, bother me a little bit first time playing the game as a kid. I was like, you, he can't leave him there. They've been through so much together. Yeah. Great ending. I, I love this game. I love this whole series, and I'm really glad you guys had the patience to sit through it with me together. Um, I really love the HD collection, it doesn't have many issues. Um, if you guys have never played the series before, definitely pick up the HD collection. Uh, the, I'm very excited about the PS4 remake that's coming out soon. I will be LPing every other game in the series um, I, that I can. I'll do the next couple of PS2 ones on the HD collection, and then I'll move on to the PS3 ones. I will probably also do Size Matters. I do not know if I will redo Deadlock because I've tried to record Deadlock three times now and end up losing my footage. So that's unfortunate, but like I said, I really love this series. I'm glad I was finally able to give this first game some justice. When I, The second game was really what got me into doing Let's Plays in the first place, and I really thought I had something to say about it. I'm glad I had something good to say about this game too, and that sure enough, it has a lot of potential for a great Let's Play. And, it took me long enough to finish it, but I'm glad that it turned out as good as it did. I had something to talk about in every episode. Do you have a problem with unwanted hair? Is painful itching in your nether regions causing you undue embarrassment? Do you just plain stink? Then you need this! The Gadgetron Personal Hygienator! Hi, I'm Steve... McQuark. And this little baby can take care of any grooming needs that are just too much trouble for you to handle yourself. Allow me to demonstrate. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, mommy. Turn it off! Turn it off!